Hey everyone, it's Snowflarky, and today I'm bringing you my Worm Deck Profile. Worms are a deck that are pretty fun. I've had these cards in my binder for a while, and I've always enjoyed their wacky, monstrous-looking design, as well as kind of the simplicity of their playstyle. So I figured I'd finally get them out, pick up a couple remaining cards, and put together a Worm Deck to pull out at my dual night and it's definitely a fun cheap deck for you to just add to your casual deck arsenal uh pretty cool if you like the wacky monsters if you like reptiles if you like flip effects uh, there's a little bit of all that going on in here and uh yeah i've been very much enjoying playing this deck so without further ado we'll get into the build here Starting off with our monster lineup, I am playing two copies of Worm King. Worm King is one of the two big worm boss monsters in the deck, and it's a pretty cool boss monster. It's got 2700 attack, which is, of course, pretty big. Uh, you can tribute summon it in face-up attack position by tributing one reptile worm type monster, so that means if it's in your hand, it's pretty easy to get out. And, of course, you, uh, you can tribute a reptile war monster to select a card your opponent controls and destroy it. Um, not once per turn. Uh, definitely an effect that will be useful uh, because there are worm monsters that don't have as high as stats. And they're better off that once you utilize their effect, you distribute them off to destroy a card. A very cool, uh, very cool boss monster and uh, pretty easy to get out. Three is a little cloggy, so two is exactly where I want it at. Next up, we are playing three copies of Worm Zex. This is one of the Worm cards that is a little more well-known. 1800 attack, four-star beater. When this card is normal summoned, you can send one reptile-type worm monster from your deck to the graveyard. If you control a face-up Worm Yagan, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. So this card isn't, uh, you're not going to use that effect too much, but, uh, you know, it gets a worm out of your deck into your graveyard to be a resource. And there's definitely one that you'll want to put in there, which we will be getting to next. And that is our three copies of Worm Yagan. Worm Yagan, normally the target, we're going to be pitching with Zex. But Worm Yagan is simply a monster that if the only monster you control is Worm Zex, you can special summon this card from your graveyard in face down defense position, but remove it from play when it leaves the field. So, you know, if you normal summon Zex, dump Yagan, you can just summon Yagan in face down defense, which is pretty cool. And the reason why that is cool is that uh, when this card is flipped face up, you select a face up monster your opponent controls and return it to the hand. And there are ways to proc that in the middle of an opponent's play in this deck, so it can be a pretty cool form of disruption. And then, of course, being that this was a level 4 and Worm Sex was a level 4, gives you the ability to make rank 4 plays, which is pretty sweet. Next up, I am playing two copies of Worm Carteros. Uh, this is a four-star flip effect monster that just says you add a level four reptile type worm monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, search Zex, search Yagan, search whichever worm you want. can even grab itself and, uh, you know, use that flip effect, tribute it off for Worm King. Uh, just gets us some worm monsters, so we're happy to see a couple copies of it. And last up for our monsters is one copy of Worm Tentacles. This is kind of the big game ender finisher of the deck, often the target that I'm grabbing off of Carteros is Worm Tentacles. Once per turn, you can remove from play a reptile type worm monster from your graveyard after this card. Uh, and then after that, this card can attack twice during the same battle phase. So 1700 attack is solid, uh, you know, getting able to attack twice, especially if you can leave your opponent open before Worm Tentacles strikes, uh, means that you can deal 3,400 life point damage, close out a game really quickly on an open board. So uh, definitely glad to have it. And that is it for our monster lineup. Next up, going into our spells, we are playing three copies of Pot of Extravagance for draw power. While you can make extra deck monsters in this deck, it's not, you know, great at building an extra deck heavy board. You more control through trap cards and the disruption of Worm Yagan, things like that. So we turn our extra deck into card advantage by banishing three to six random cards. We can, of course, draw a card for every three that we did so. Uh, you can only use one pot of extravagance for turn, and you can't use other draw effects, but that's okay. We like that plus one. Uh, next up, another powerful draw spell, Card of Demise. Let's you draw until you have three cards in your hand. Uh, and in exchange, uh, you can't special summon, and your opponent doesn't take battle damage after this card is played. 
And also at the end phase, you have to ditch the rest of the cards, but when you're playing a lot of trap cards, a lot of those cards can be set. You don't have to worry about it too much. And there are a lot of times on your turn where you're just normal summoning a monster, not doing a lot of special summoning. So, there, the, you know, the drawbacks don't outweigh the benefits, and the benefits are great. So uh, we want to play this card, get those cards in our hand. And last for the spells, we are playing three Pot of Duality. Um, since we're already giving up special summoning on most turns, we might as well use Pot of Duality for a little consistency. Reveal the top three cards of the deck and grab the key card that we want. Shuffle the rest back in, and uh, it's as easy as that. Next up, we are going into our trap cards. Starting off, we are playing three copies of w, w Nebula Meteorite. This is the kind of worm payoff trap card for the archetype, uh, and it's a pretty sweet trap card. You essentially change all face-down monsters on the field to face-up defense position, and then, of course, during the end phase of the turn, you change all face-up light reptile type monsters which is what all your worms are you control the face down defense position and then you draw a card for each that got switched to face down so you can draw lots of cards off of that very awesome but it doesn't end there you can also special summon a level seven or higher light reptile type monster from your deck this is how we get worm king out of the deck onto the field most of the time um, you know, you summon it off of the W Nebula, and of course that ability to flip our Worm Monsters face up is pretty nice. You know, we can use that to trigger our Karteros. We can use that to trigger our Yagan and use the Yagan effect to disrupt an opponent in the middle of a play. Um, very important uh, card to keep the deck moving, and always note when you want to activate W Nebula Meteorite, you uh, need to make sure you have a face down monster to flip face up, so if you don't have Yagan or Karteros, it's not bad to necessarily set a Zex or set a Tentacles just to be able to get that proc as long as your other trap cards are ready to defend them beforehand. And uh, it's very cool. Uh, you can often draw a lot of cards in one turn with W Nebula. Um, the Worm Yagan Disruption is pretty nice. And all that draw power can draw you mini cards at the end of your opponent's turn. Maybe it gets you into extravagance that you can use on your turn. And then from there, you can just be building up a lot of cards. And that will keep you in the game and make you be able to um, duke your opponent out. Next, I am playing three copies of Trap Trick. Since we have a normal trap card that is very important to the deck uh, to play, we are playing Trap Trick so that we can get it. Trap Trick banishes a normal trap card from your deck, and then you set a card of the same name from your deck face down. It can be activated this turn, but after you use Trap Trick, of course, you can only activate one more trap card per turn. So a good way to end a turn if you didn't have to trigger Nebula, but you have face downs to flip and want to draw a card, you can Trap Trick at the uh, towards the end of the turn, put Nebula down, just activate nebula right at the end phase or at the end of main phase two um, very cool uh, there's a lot of other traps you may need at a certain point so trap trick can grab those too awesome card for trap oriented decks uh, next up we are playing a bit of a solemn package uh, solemn judgment at three copies uh, important card for these trap card decks to protect your back row protect your key stun cards when your opponent draws an out you know, you're normally locking your opponent out of the game in some way and giving them only a few outs they have to a board. So being able to say no to that specific out is very important, especially if it's a move that will force them to pass and let you finish the game. Maybe a little greedy to play these with Triple Solemn Judgment, but I'm also playing a copy of Solemn Strike and a copy of Solemn Warning. Like I said, you won't you be able to resolve all of them every game, but uh, they're very powerful cards, and it's nice to make sure you have access to some of them. So Solemn Strike, of course, pays 1,500 life points to negate a special summon or a monster effect, and Solemn Warning is 2,000 life points to negate a summon or a card that would summon a monster. So, very cool. Use those to stop an opponent's key moment. Have them pass back to you. Next up, two copies of Lost Wind. Pretty good uh, trap card. Uh, we don't necessarily have a lock that stops our opponent from special summoning completely, so it's nice to have an answer to those special summon monsters. You target a face-up special summon monster, its attack is halved, and its effect is negated. And then, of course, if this card is in your graveyard and a monster is special summoned from your opponent's extra deck, you can set this card again. So, you know, recurs, negates effects, 
Paths attack, all pretty cool. Uh, next, I am playing three copies of Storming Mirror Force. A uh, little risky card because it can get popped before the battle phase, but the payoff of Storming Mirror Force is pretty good that uh, I'm willing to take the risk. Um, you know, when an opponent's attack position monster declares some attack, you return all your opponent's attack position monsters to the hand. So it's nice. It's non-destruction, non-targeting removal. They attack with a board, and, you know, if you've already baited out their negates or whatnot, you send everything back. Uh, very cool. Uh, leaves the, your board open for your warm tentacles to finish things off. And, uh, yeah, awesome card. Um, works out very well for me. Do keep in mind when you're playing trap cards, of course, that you should always be adjusting your trap lineup to uh, a deal with whatever decks you're playing against whether you're playing with your friends or at a local tournament you know whatever cards you're seeing that's what your trap should be designed to counter uh, additionally i am playing two copies of blazing mirror force um, very arguably should be regular mirror force with the solemns but blazing mirror force is always a card i like in these decks because when it just it not only destroys monsters but it burns the opponent's life points and that extra burn damage oftentimes puts my opponent in the range i need them to be so that i can finish them off on the next turn so if i can blazing fear mirror force some monsters kind of stop their turn at a halt uh, leave their board open with a little extra damage then i can summon just enough attack power to close out the game quicker and very important for decks like this because the more time you give your opponent the more they'll out your cards next up i'm playing two copies of rivalry of the warlords this is kind of my win card in this deck uh oftentimes rivalry can carry this deck it's essentially a card that says uh each player can only control monsters of one type on the field everything in this deck is a reptile so that's not too big of a punishment it does limit your extra deck plays a bit but like i said the extra deck is mostly extravagance fodder so being able to just auto win with rivalry often works uh this card can be cited out for goes and match because everything is light so you can use goes and match to make use of the attribute or just any kind of floodgate that you want to uh counter your opponent's decks um so very cool oftentimes can be a game winner but you know when you're playing a weaker deck like worms that kind of thing is just necessary and last for trap cards i am playing two copies of heavy storm duster often a deck where i want to go first so i don't mind that it's a trap card and it can destroy two spells or traps so that card advantage is pretty nice um, definitely can be twin twisters or cosmic cyclone or whatever kind of spell and trap removal you have those are good things to have in your side but uh, for game ones i like to have heavy storm duster and that is it for the main deck. Last here, we will be going into our extra deck. Um, extra deck isn't too big. You'll make these monsters sometimes, but not a lot. It's just often better to sit on your worm bodies and you know use the extra deck for extravagance. But what I am playing, one copy of Gaga Ga Cowboy. Uh, if this card's in your extra deck, you need a little extra damage to finish the game off. That's all right. Overlay into Cowboy for 800. Classic move. Next up, a copy of Baguska. Uh, Baguska is nice. Your two level fours can just become a defense position Baguska. When Baguska is in defense, uh, you know, all other monsters are shifted to defense and their effects can't be activated. Pretty sweet. Um, definitely one that you want to make if you need to buy a couple turns. Next up, I have two copies of Tornado Dragon, mainly because this one is very useful and I don't want to banish all of them off of Extravagance. So two level four monsters become a monster that once per turn during either player's turn, detach a material to pop a spell or trap card. Very cool. We don't like dealing with back row, so we'll take care of that. Next up is a Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. This is a pick kind of particular just for me. I noticed I was having several matchups against my dueling group where I just needed a monster that could be ridiculously big to out a monster. So Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon does that job. You detach both materials, target a monster, have its attack, and Rebellion gains that attack. Pretty cool. Uh, next up, playing a copy of Castell. Uh, two level fours, and then of course you detach a material from this card, target a face-up card on the field, and shuffle it back into the deck. Uh, definitely what we want. One copy of Abyss Dweller. Uh, Abyss Dweller is a pretty cool card that uh, you'd use two level four monsters. 
Um, and then, of course, once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach a uh, material from this card. And your opponent cannot activate any card effects in the graveyard this turn. So very graveyard-oriented deck. You make Abyss Dweller, kind of put a halt to their turn. Pretty good stuff. Next up, playing a copy of Steel Swarm Roach. Uh, Steel Swarm Roach is a card that has helped me in just some particular matchups. I wouldn't play this if you don't have matchups this works in. But essentially, during either player's turn, when a level 5 or higher monster would be special summon, you can detach an XZ material from this card, negate the special summon, and destroy it. So it takes care of some particular matchups, you know, things like Cyber Dragon. I was just noticing that uh, my opponent was summoning lots of level... F had a few decks that had level 5 or higher monsters, so I was playing Steel Swarm Roach to deal with that. And then we are playing a copy of Divine Arsenal A Zeus, Sky Thunder. Uh, pretty powerful XZ that you can overlay on top of any XZ that attacked this turn, which is how you make it. And then, of course, it has a quick effect. You can detach two materials from this card uh, and send all other cards from the field to the graveyard. So, very powerful card. Um, can put your opponent in a tough spot, you know, if you're ready to pop that off. And, of course... Um, once per turn, if another card or cards you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand, deck, or extra deck to this card as material. So a way to fuel it up with more materials and, uh, you know, be able to use its effect more often. Now that is it for the XZs that we actually go into. Of course, one thing to keep in mind is with Rivalry of the Warlord, you actually can't summon any of these, but there is a really good rank 4 XZ called King of the Feral Imps you could make to just add another reptile to your hand, keep the flow of cards going. Uh, so that's an option that's in there. I just found it not too worthwhile to make. Uh, the last cards in my extra deck are cards that I have in so that I can side deck Waking the Dragon. Uh, it's a trap card that when the opponent destroys it, and uh, it's either sent to the graveyard or banished by an opponent's card effect. Um, you can special summon a monster from your deck or extra deck. And there are some very powerful extra deck monsters. So I wanted to save some slots for them. Um, three of which are Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. It's a 3,500 attack monster that's unaffected by card effects. Makes it very hard to deal with. Uh, you know, they have to kaiju it or attack over it, and if they don't have that answer, uh, you know, that pretty much ends the game for them. And then, of course, next is our Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon. 4,500 tech, which is huge, and it cannot be targeted or destroyed, which isn't as good as unaffected, but still pretty good, oftentimes enough. And if you want, instead of attacking, you can even pop a card with this, so pretty cool. Uh, definitely want those targets in. You play a lot of trap cards, so your opponent might want a Twin Twisters or Harpy's Feather Duster, especially when you're playing Mirror Forces. Uh, Waking the Dragon just does so much. So having Waking the Dragon ready to side in is very important. So, you know, if your opponent's trying to destroy the Mirror Forces before they activate and they hit a Waking the Dragon, well, you know, you get a big payoff off of that. Um, so, and that is it for the extra deck. All right, so that completes the Worm deck profile. Like I said, this is a very fun deck, uses some flip effects, just builds steady card advantage, has some control elements to it, and it's pretty simple to play, very budget, so I figured it was great to add to my collection. Also, I just love how goofy these Worm monsters look. Like, you know, they all look like, you know, classic, silly monstrosities. The kind of card artworks that I really like about Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, fun deck. Reptiles, control, you beat your opponent down with them. I have, I'm having a lot of fun playing it and uh, will continue to do so. So let me know below if you're a fan of worms, what your favorite worm monster is, maybe what your favorite reptile deck is. And uh, very glad to show this off. Um, hope it helps out some worm enthusiasts. I know it's a very underutilized deck, but there's enough discussion about it that I figured I should just add another resource to it. But excellent. Thank you for checking it out, everyone. I appreciate it greatly, and I'll catch you in the next one.